we go. Let's see. There. I'd like to welcome everyone to the July meeting of the Zoning Hearing Board. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. This is the Apologize for my tardiness. Um, I'll introduce John Ronamonte, our solicitor, who in, who will introduce the board and call the first first and only case. Good evening, everyone. Chairman Solicitor of the Zoning Green Board, and I'd like to introduce the members of the board, James Hotel. With that, I'm standing with Ralph Clayton coming in before the board. All right, so the uh, petition is 7 1 22. The question of Texas School District, Michael Severa, for a variance from Zoning Ordinance Number 678, about the December 13th, 2012 section, 600 322C, enlargement of a non containing use which exceeds 25% of the additional property, 832 Duckworth Avenue, for Texas School District, under Zone R 2 residential. Mr. Here this evening. Thank you very much. And why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the case and then put your first witness in. If, if I can. Uh... So, so, excuse me. What are they called? Oh, yes, of course, please. Why, sir? Yeah, green. But he can just submit it during the case, but that's fine. Yeah, that's great. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. And you are, sir? Okay, so they're the famous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, filed by my client, uh, and it includes deeds and, and other relevant uh, packets. As I indicated, uh, my name is Ernie Angels. I have the pleasure of representing the school district this evening. With me is Gus Hootman. Uh, our engineer will be my only witness. In addition, with me is the school district's uh, financial director, uh, Tony Testa. In addition to our finance, uh, I'm sorry, our facilities director, uh, Mike Severa. Um, we are here this evening in, in connection with the school district's desire to construct uh, an approximate 3,200 square foot maintenance garage on its property located at 832 Bethel Road, which actually sits at the intersection of Bethel Road and a Paper Street Fisher Drive, and, and we'll get into that with, with the plans. Uh, the property is approximately five acres uh, and is and has been used by the district uh, for storage of equipment and materials related to its property maintenance and it has been used that way for quite some time uh, and I would submit to you and, and Mr. Hootman will testify to it this is actually a pre-existing non-conforming use the property is actually zoned R2 and the use for which the district is is occupying the property is, is not a permitted in the, in the R2 residential district. Uh, the district does intend to continue its use uh, and specifically with the um, proposed garage uh, is for additional storage uh, of equipment. So we are uh, continuing a non-conforming use under the Township Zoning Code Section 600-217. In its present condition, uh, the property is covered with uh, bituminous paving and gravel. It's currently improved with a 3,395 square foot one-story maintenance building. It has two smaller garages on it, uh, totaling uh, 1,555 square feet, a 390 square foot salt bin, and a 60 square foot shed. Um, again, the, the, the desire of the new garage is for purposes of uh, additional storage for the maintenance and uh, facilities equipment, uh, and will actually be located, or at least proposed, the location is the south side of the property, 
is actually behind, as you'll see, the existing one-story building, uh, which fronts Bethel Road. Um, the property, the building, uh, as it sits right now and as it will sit, should the board be inclined to grant the requested relief, uh, is compliant with all of the R2 bulk area requirements. That includes um, the setbacks, that includes the impervious coverage, that includes the building coverage, also includes the height of the buildings. So we're all compliant there. Where we run into uh, a non-compliance is with section 600.22C, Township's Code, which says that a non-conforming use cannot exceed or be exceeded uh, if you're expanding that more than 25% of the area. So that that is specifically uh, what we're requesting this evening. Um, and because of that, uh, we're seeking a variance from that section. With specificity to that, section 6222C says that a non-conforming structure uh, or use can be expanded provided the following conditions are met. A, it's clear that such enlargement or extension is not material, a uh, material detrimental to the health, safety, and welfare of the surrounding area. B, that the proposed enlargement or extension only occurs on the track where the non-conformity is currently located. C, that the area devoted to the non-conforming use shall not be increased by more than 25%. Non-conforming structure shall not be increased by 25% of its cubic content. D, any extension or enlargement of a bulk, I'm sorry, of a building shall conform to the area, height, and setback regulations of the district in which it is located. And E, not more than one extension or enlargement to the conforming use or structure shall be granted. And I would submit uh, respectfully to the board that we satisfy every one of those criteria except for subsection C relevant to the 25%. Again, that's why uh, we are here this evening seeking parents. Uh, and with that, uh, that brief uh, summation, um, I would like to call uh, Mr. Hoopman. Mr. Hoopman, um, who are you currently employed by? And what is your um, title with that? Uh, and as part of our, our packet, which I have presented to you and also to the board, uh, I have pre-marked exhibit A2, and that's your CV, correct? Can you give the board a little bit of background about your, uh, a little bit about your educational background? And how about municipal, municipal experience? Do you have any municipal experience? And have you testified uh, as an expert before and been qualified as an expert in the area of zoning and uh, civil engineering before zoning hearing boards in Delaware County? Uh, provided the board doesn't uh, need any additional uh, background, I would submit and request it. Accept it. Accept it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hoopman, initially, uh, can you describe for the board, you know, give them a brief uh, uh, description of the subject property?
And as I indicated in my submission, the property is in the R2 zoning district, right? And can you give a brief summation as to how the district is currently using the property? Now, continuing with that, what type of equipment and or materials are you aware of what's stored on that property? And it would be the intent of the district, should the board uh, be inclined to do so, store some of that equipment in the new garage. Now, I had indicated also in my opening that the school district uh, is not proposing any change to that use. We're, it is intended to continue the use as, as it is now. And as I also indicated, um, that use is not a permitted use in, in the R2 residential district, is it? The best of your knowledge, and, and should you know, do you know how long the, the district has been using that property in that fashion? And, and in your expert testimony, that would be a legal non-conforming pre-existing use. Now, by way of uh, proposed garage, can you give the board a, an understanding as to what's being, you know, the development being proposed? And as part of this project, you prepared several plans in connection with the proposed development, correct? And if I could draw your attention to exhibit A3, uh, which I have pre-marked, that is uh, the existing site plan that you prepared for the project, correct? And could you give a, a brief orientation uh, of the location of the site for the board? And as I indicated uh, again in my opening, that uh, this is somewhat of an intersection of, of Bethel Road and, and Fisher Drive, which is Paper Street. Can you identify that, the board? So to keep with that, um, if we're going to go with uh, west, what's what's west of the property? What's above uh, on the at least on this? What's west? Uh, it's a uh, property owned by Pendot. We open vacant ground. How about to the south? To the south is uh, it's the Beezers Run, which forms the southern boundary of the property. Further south, uh, across Beezers Run, are uh, looks like commercial properties owned by Cisco Corporation and property which is also owned by Upper Chichester Township. And then uh, I'll say to the east, which is flooding Fisher Drive, the Paper Street, uh, what's on that side of, what, what's the property there? I believe, I believe that's, that's primarily vacant ground as well. How about across the street on Bethel Road? Uh, across the street on Bethel Road is the um, Pendot, Pendot building, building, 
um, back, I guess, of the back of that shopping center there is the Pendot building and other uh, commercial uses in that little strip store. So while it's zoned R2, it's safe to say that most of the surrounding property is, is either vacant ground or of some type of commercial use. Right. That would, that would be a fair estimate. Now, if you could turn to exhibit A4, that is the proposed site development plan that you prepared, correct? Correct. Right. Okay. Um, just give the board uh, a description as to what this plan depicts, if you would mind. Uh, I have a colored version of the plan here on the board. Uh, the site development plan includes all the information included on the existing conditions plan. Um, that would include the location of the existing buildings, uh, parking area, access drives. Also shows existing tree masses um, uh, associated with the property. Uh, the site development plan also shows the proposed uh, location of the 3,200 square foot maintenance building or garage building, and also stormwater management and ENS facilities associated with construction of the of the building. So where it's proposed to be located, it looks like uh, the garage is actually located uh, behind the existing building, one-story building that butts uh, Bethel Road, correct? Correct, correct. Are there any other um, means of, of sheltering or shielding this property or this building from the surrounding properties? Yes, yes the, the, well, the, well, the as you correctly identified, the existing um facilities office building will will provide uh partial screening uh from the viewscape from bethel road and then along the uh western eastern and southern uh property boundaries to a varying degree are located um vegetated buffers uh which will provide screening from the adjoining property owners looking um from those pro looking in from those property lines and kind of along the same vein, um, what's the what's the distance uh, from the building to, let's say, the uh, western boundary line? The distance from the building to the western boundary line is that is 108 feet. So the building, the western property boundary would be from uh, from the west side of the building down the page to the to the property line, which is also uh, forms the northern uh, right-of-way line or, or or boundary line of, of, of Fisher Drive. How about to the south? To the south, that's 390 feet, and that distance is measured from the back of the building uh, to the uh, boundary line identified as north 60 degrees, 32 minutes, 30 seconds west, 167 feet. Let's keep around. How about to the west? Or, I'm sorry, to the east. To the east, uh, you have 228 feet, and that's measured from, again, the the eastern side of the, the proposed building uh, to the eastern property boundary. And the eastern property boundary is identified as being north 29 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds east, 437 feet. Thank you. Now, in, in preparation for this evening's hearing uh, and in your capacity as a, a zoning civil engineer expert, um, you're, you have reviewed and are familiar with the township zoning code? Yes. And in, in your expert opinion, um, the property as it's currently approved is conforming with the R2's district bulk area requirements, which includes the setback, the height, the impervious and building coverage, correct? Yes, yeah. the, the, the property uh, as it currently stands meets all the minimum bulk area and dimensional requirements of the R2 zoning district. And again, if the board were to grant relief uh, and we and this, the district were to move forward with trucking this, this garage, would the property still satisfy all of those R2 bulk area requirements? Yes, correct. Um, so, again, the the only issue pending for the board this evening then is uh, that 25% uh, expansion or increase connection with Section 600 to, to, to C. Correct. 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 Uh, and as I indicated in my opening, that section permits a, a non-conforming use or structure to be extended, enlarged, or altered. Uh, under the following conditions. Again, it's clear that such enlargement or extension is not material detrimental to the health, safety, welfare of the surrounding area. Pros enlargement or extension only occurs on the track where the nonconformity is currently located, that the area devoted to the nonconformity shall not be increased by more than 25%, and the extension or enlargement of the building shall conform with all bulk area requirements of the district it's located in. Again, not more than one extension or enlargement is to be granted. Is that correct? Correct. Right. 
So let's let's kind of quickly run through those. Uh, in your expert opinion, does the enlargement pose any material detriment to the health, safety, or welfare of the surrounding area? No, it does not. And is the garage to be located on a track where the nonconformity is currently located? That's correct. Does the garage conform to the area, height, setback, regulations of the R2 zoning district? Yes, it does. And is this the only request being made for the enlargement of this property? Yes. Okay. And then lastly, is the area devoted to the nonconformity um, being expanded by more than 25%? Yes. And again, that's why uh, we're here this that's evening. That's why we're here this evening, correct. So what specifically um, is the percentage by which pro structure will increase the nonconforming? The nonconforming use at the property is being enlarged by 3,200 square feet. That's again, that's at 53. 53B4 by 60 foot building dimension. Um, and this represents the 300 square feet, represents a 59.3% increase over the existing non conforming building coverage currently at the property. And because we're seeking a variance this evening, obviously you know, there are certain criteria that, that need to be met, proven before the board. And similarly to my prior question, in your preparation for this evening, you're familiar with the, the Pennsylvania law and the township's uh, requirements with regard to various requests. Correct. Right. Uh, and we'll run through those. It, in your opinion, is there any physical, uh, unique physical circumstance or condition of the property which creates an unnecessary hardship that inhibits the usefulness and, and reasonable expansion of this property? Yeah, in my, in my opinion, yes. Uh, the property as it currently exists has very little non-conforming uh, building coverage when compared to the lot area. Uh, the five acre lot could support upwards of 1.25 acres of or 54,450 square feet of building coverage and would still be in compliance with the 25% maximum building coverage uh, requirement uh, contained in the R2 zoning district. The track, uh, the track that this stands now only has 5,400 square feet of non conforming building coverage uh, or one tenth that allowed by code. Um, which is actually located at the property. So you had testified, I'm sorry. And, 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 and the, 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 the limited nature of the existing non-conforming structures at the property makes it nearly impossible to develop a reasonable expansion of the property similar to what the school district needs with that limited existing non-conforming building area. So keeping in mind that, that logic, um, you had testified earlier that the percentage increase is the 59%, but what's the actual increase in, in the building coverage? The 3,200 3, square feet represents a 1.4% increase in the building coverage at the property. So in your expert opinion, this is be fair to classify this as a de minimis request? Yes, in my opinion, the 1.4% increase could be, could be looked at or realized as a de minimis request for the expansion. And is this hardship self-inflicted? Uh, no, um, especially when um, taking into consideration, again, as I testified, the amount of existing um, existing uh, non-conforming building uh, coverage that's available that's now currently at the property, the reasonable the reasonable expansion of 3,200 square feet. Again, um, when you take into consideration the limited amount of existing non-conforming area, it's almost impossible to, 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 to uh, you know, to, to develop the property in conformance with section 622C. And you had answered this question previously under uh, specifically section 600222C, but in your opinion, will the grant of the variance adversely impact public health, safety, and welfare? In my opinion, it will not. Uh, and is this variance sought the minimum variance that is uh, necessary to afford relief? Yes, my understanding is that the 3,200 square foot building uh, is the smallest footprint uh, that will provide the storage needs for the school district at the property. And lastly, in this regard, um, is the proposed garage, will that affect the, the characteristic of the surrounding neighborhood? And again, just to kind of bring things back together, um, with the exception of the 25% increase limitation. Uh, proposed use complies with all bulk area requirements of 
of R2 zoning district. Correct. He easily complies with the minimum bulk area and dimension requirements of the R2 zoning district. Um, now, I know I've been doing this somewhat a decent amount of time, and I, I know that uh, even though this isn't a land development question, zoning hearing boards uh, typically, especially when you're you're adding impervious coverage, want to know about uh, stormwater management. So, you know, briefly, could you provide a little bit of information as to the, the stormwater mitigation? Yeah, what we've shown uh, located on the south side of, of the proposed uh, maintenance garage is a uh, stormwater uh, management infiltration facility uh, that's been roughly sized to handle the increased runoff associated with the 3,200 square foot expansion uh, that's realized by the proposed building construction. And if I could draw your attention to exhibit A5, just to kind of put a, a, a picture to what's being proposed here. Uh, these are elevations prepared by Murata Main Architects, correct? Correct. Can you explain to the board you know, exactly what this depicts? Well, what they're, what they're showing is an elevation of the front of the building, which would be uh, looking south uh, into the front of the building. And it's a three bay garage uh, with a man door located uh, at the, I'll call it the southwest corner of the, um, of the building. I'm sorry, the northwest corner. I'm sorry, northwest corner of the building. Uh, and again, it's uh, the, the 3,200 square feet, the 53 foot four by 60 uh, has been, um, you know, selected by uh, the school district uh, for the storage of maintenance vehicles and occasional uh, materials at the property. And that uh, exhibit A5 uh, has an elevation front elevation with three garage doors. Is that yes, that's exactly, as I testified, that's looking south. Uh, that elevation is the south elevation looking at the front of the uh, of the proposed maintenance garage. Uh, and there's not going to be any office space or any slides in here? No, it's all open uh, storage area. Any um, restroom facilities? No. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, only, uh, only that if this board was so inclined to uh, grant the waiver that you know the, the applicant has to go through another step, either via a grading and stormwater management application or a land development application that would further define stormwater management requirements, possibly some buffer and landscaping requirements. Um, but other than that, I have nothing further to add. And, and certainly, as as a as a reasonable condition, um, do have members of the district here that could testify. But in your Discussion with them, obviously, uh, you know, we would we would comply with all of the townships uh, stormwater management. Open Absolutely, the, the school district is is intimately familiar with the requirements of the township, and then they realize that um, you know further approval other than this zoning relief would be needed to 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 uh, allow the, the building to be constructed at the property. And then, lastly, um, with regard to your opinions this evening, were they made uh, with a reasonable degree of, of zoning and engineering certainty? Yes, they have. Um, I have no further questions at this point. I would just ask that um, exhibits uh, A1 through A5 be made part of the record. And that would uh, that would be the conclusion of, of our presentation. Correct. Yes, it, it will actually be, in my opinion, it will actually be a benefit to the surrounding neighbors because the limited viewscapes that they do have, some, some of that is does include looking at storage of maintenance equipment, which will now be, instead of being outside, will be inside the building. <laughs> yes, my understanding is mostly offices. Uh, Mike Severe is also here. He can confirm that. But my understanding is that's mostly office for the, for the facilities personnel. I just have two questions. The doors on the garage, are they going to face the back of the front building? They are going to face, yeah, the back of the existing office building. And the other question I have is how close is the building to the steep slopes in the back? Um, if you just let me get a scale out of my briefcase, I can tell you exactly. All an estimate would do. You don't well, have to I be perfect. Sure I get you something, something, something close. 
the scale right here. Yeah. Yeah. While he's scaling it, I just want to remind you guys, when you are speaking, turn on the mic so we can hear. Thank you. Uh, closest point's about 50 feet. There's a, there's a band of steep slopes that are associated with the original construction, I believe, of the, uh, this is all gravel access and parking area in the back of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, in back of the maintenance building now, um, and I believe that steep slope was created when they graded that area out to create that flat parking area back there. Um, but the distance from the closest corner to that graded area, which is which is a steeply sloped area, is about there. Thank you. Apologize. I just asked if anybody in the audience or anybody online um, was for or against the applicant. Seeing none, uh, we're going to take a quick recess. We'll be very right back. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. So, <clears throat> in your testimony, you said that this was going to be a storage facility, correctly, for equipment, flat snow plows, maybe a truck or two, or There's, there's, it's not going to be any type of maintenance shop, uh, truck maintenance, weld, welding. That's welding. Specifically, about the board is one. We're going to stick with safe driving information, but it's been slowed down. Of waiting that way to begin the decision for you. The record request the council was kind enough to give us a way of the right to receive your commands. Therefore, we'll call the question subject to a safe budget to be stipulated that being the and for no means to repair it. Which, that being said, the school board has to go back. Yes, I wouldn't miss it. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, therefore, to call the question is. Uh, how does the board vote on this application for variance to permit the enlargement of the emergency funds by allowing this building that is on the application? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous from those members that are here to see. All right. And we'll get you out of the decision as soon as I can type it up. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank Thanks, everybody. And we, Anybody else here? Anything for the learning board? Nope. Meeting closed.